Hey, Alex Sanfilippo here, and thank you so much for visiting my Podmatch profile. I want to quickly go over what I'm covering on podcasts these days when I'm a guest. I've covered a lot of things. I've been on about 200 shows, and it started off talking about aerospace, because that's what I was in at one point, to talking about blogging, to talking about entrepreneurship. And now I'm kind of at a further iteration of these things. I really am focused on podcasting specifically. So either side of the mic, as someone who's been on about 200 shows and done close to that on my own show as well, my focus is helping podcasters and podcast guests. And I obviously do this through my, my services, right? Podmatch and Podcast SOP and Pod Pros. The idea that I want to bring to the table is that podcasting is a great way to get your message out there, to grow your influence, to build a legacy for yourself, to get your voice heard. I don't have anything to promote while I'm there. Yes, I am the founder of these softwares, but I would really rather, I can talk about them if that's something that you'd like me to do, but I never want to self-promote or anything like that. I am strictly showing up to add value. So if you think your audience would benefit from a conversation about podcasting on either side of the mic, please let me know. I'd love the opportunity to share with them. Hopefully we can add a lot of value together. Listen to the vibes. Welcome everyone to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. And I'm very happy to welcome Alex Sanfilippo here. And he runs a site called Podmatch, which I am very psyched about. I've enjoyed being on there. I can't say enough good because I, I've had so many great guests coming from it. I'm going to let him explain exactly what it is. And before that, Alex, tell us a little bit more about you. Yeah, uh, Kyle, first off, thank you for having me, man. Uh, really excited to be here. Love the vibe of the podcast. Like you do just a great job with it. Uh, as Kyle mentioned, my name is Alex Sanfilippo, and uh, I've, I've got a background in aerospace. Uh, I've got a background in hanging out with friends, but it's all been in Florida, which is a place I love. I'm like an outdoors guy, but I love the heat. I love the ocean. And that's just the type of thing I'm interested in. So like, I love everything uh, that this place has to offer. Some people are like, oh, it's too hot there. Man, I'm real happy right now, especially at time of recording where it's a little colder in some parts of the world. Uh, anyway, so for me, I just absolutely love being outside. I love being with friends. I love working as well. Like these are all things I really enjoy. Uh, and above all that, though, uh, I'm a follower of Jesus. I'm a husband and a family man. And so uh, it just I, I've got so many, I don't have any kids of my own, but I have nieces and nephews and, and friends I've just been able to pour into. So for me, it's just about having a meaningful experience in life. And these are some of the things that I personally really enjoy and love. Well, I mentioned Podmatch. Yeah. Um, some people may not know what that is, so explain it. Yeah, sure. I'll keep it real brief here because I have I think I've discovered the simplest way to describe it. Um, Podmatch is a service that connects podcast guests and podcast hosts together for interviews. So I always say it works like a dating app, but instead of connecting you for dates, it connects you for podcast interviews. So like, if I want to come on here and, and talk about uh, what I do and what I've done in business and in life and stuff like that, it'll find me a host saying... Hey, I'm looking for someone to come on talk about just their life experience. It'll match the two of you together. You can message in the platform schedule and all that. The whole idea was taking the friction out of connecting people to to create great content that really serves the world. And that's what I believe podcasting does. Yeah, it used to be on a site called matchmaker.fm. Yeah, good site. Yeah. It it's a great site. I I like the way Podmatch does things better. It Thank seems you. like it's easier. But I did have to explain to my wife that I was not on a dating site because, you know, matchmaker. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then that pod match, you, you know, I got to share something funny. I don't think I've ever shared this before, Kyle, but when we first launched a lot of the tools like QuickBooks, uh, they use AI to decide what something is you're signing up for. And right when Podmatch launched, we had no reputation behind us. So it's just kind of like you have to earn a reputation with these websites. Well, their AI automatically corrected Podmatch to match.com. And we had so many husbands reaching out to us saying, dude, my wife is the one doing like the books. And we just got in a huge fight because she sees a paid subscri subscription to match.com. And we're like, we don't know how to fix that. So that was one of our early problems we had to overcome. So uh, yes, not a dating site. I don't, to my knowledge, no one has even started dating because of Podmatch or Matchmaker, right? So, um, but yeah, we try to keep it clearly different. Let's put it that way. So there's different tiers when you sign up, right? Correct. Yep. Can you explain those? Yeah, sure. So we, we tried our best to make it really simple for anybody. And I understand people are in different parts of their journey. So we have two tiers. We have a standard plan and professional plan. I always tell people start on the standard plan and you can upgrade at any point or you can downgrade at any point and move between the two. And we only, we took a year discount and applied it just to the monthly and just basically like, hey, it's always just going to be the best lowest price. And then you can just flip back and forth whenever you want to. But so the standard plan gets most people more than enough. Most people aren't looking for 
to be on a podcast every day or for a guest every day, right? Uh, and the professional is when you're saying, hey, I've got like a book coming out or uh, I really want to get my message out to the world. Right now, I'm in a season of wanting to do this. That's why I recommend people using the professional plan. But basically, one gets you more, one just gets you less from the ability of how many matches you'll get, how many people you see, all that. But in general, I always tell people, start with the standard plan unless, of course, you just know you've got to be at that higher plan and just see if it works out for you. What I really like about it is not only am I meeting so many wonderful people, but I'm getting paid to interview these people. I get on, I, you know, most of the time I have to say people are messaging me. I hardly ever have to get out there and, and start looking for people. But as long as they come on, we do the show, the interview's over, I go in and close everything out. They close everything out on their site. And next thing you know, man, it's racking up. It's racking up. I make over a hundred and something dollars a month doing this. And that's what $6 it cost me to sign up for this. <laughs> what better way to make money, man, six bucks a month. And I'm getting a hundred and something dollars in return. In fact, we had went back to Baytown for my grandson's birthday and we were kind of hoping to have a little extra money and we're trying to figure out, okay, well, what can we do here? And the next thing you know, I get a message. Uh, you've been paid by Podmatch. <laughs> I, I think I had 120 some odd dollars extra this weekend to spend on birthday. Man, that just made my day. Like I need to just take that one little clip from this because I want to post that everywhere, um, which we'll talk about after. But uh, man, thank you for saying that. It, here's the thing, like paying hosts is such an important thing to to like me. Like the, it, it's the only metric I actually track um, to give you an inside opinion to like the quote unquote weird founder that I am. I'm looking at how much we're putting back in the hands of podcast creators, the hosts, because man, there's it's a labor of love, man. Like Kyle, you're great at this. You've been doing it for a long time, but you know, it's a labor of love. And it's just like, man, for me, I'm like, can we somehow help them offset their costs at the very least so that they can keep on going? Because I, I firmly believe, as I said earlier, podcasting is one of the primary mediums that's serving the world right now. It's the best content out there. Like if I want to find something I feel isn't like, and not to get political, but like overly agenda driven, I go to podcasts because I'm going to get something raw. Like I'm going to get somebody who just wants to learn from somebody else. Not like, okay, we got to make sure people think this way, right? It's pretty rare in the culture here. So for me, I'm like, man, can we just help people continue podcasting? Because I don't know if you know the numbers, but it's extremely rare that anyone makes it in podcasting. I mean, it just so rare. So for me, being able to put a little bit of money, I know it's not a lot right now, like it, it helps for sure, but it's not like a full-time income or anything, but I have a dream of someday, hopefully being able to find a way to, to make it even more for people. And the, at, at time of recording this year that we're in, our goal is to put a quarter million dollars back in the hands of podcast creators, the hosts themselves. Like we want to do that. And we're, it's, it's forcing me as a, as a, as a software founder to get very creative with how on earth we're going to be able to do that. Right. But uh, again, that's where my full focus is, is how do we keep podcasters podcasting and help enable them to really serve the world in the way only they can. And Kyle, I'll stop my rant right there. Cause I feel like I went off on that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, man. It's your time. Well, I do notice sometimes I'll get a guest and it will be double the commission. How, how does that work? Yeah. So the way that we did it is basically we take the 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 amount of money the guest is is paying to be on the platform because guests also pay to be on the platform. And uh, we just we basically cut that. Uh, and, and Alicia, my wife, who's one of my co-founders, we could tell you the numbers way better than I could. Um, but somehow we basically say, hey, we'll keep this much to keep the platform running. And the rest goes back to the podcast creator. But if that person's interviewed by 10 people that month, it gets divided up among those 10 different hosts. And uh, we, we do that because sometimes we, we realize we've had, we've had a number of celebrities join Podmatch and they'll show up and be on 100 podcasts. And it broke our model. Let's put it that way. When everyone was getting paid a, like a, their whole subscription each time, right? Uh, it was like, uh-oh, like that puts us in the hole big time. Like we'll shut our doors in a month if we do it like this. So we just basically take their the amount that they're paying and then divide it up among the podcast hosts are having them on, which also I like because it helps incentivize podcast hosts to not just think, okay, I, I want the A-list person. Sometimes they're like, hey, this person has an interesting story. Maybe they haven't even been booked. You'll earn more by booking that person. Um, and it kind of just reminds, I think it levels the playing field of like, hey, let's, all people are created equal. At least that's what I believe, right? And sometimes the story that you'll get from somebody that no one's heard of can be better 
than someone famous. Uh, and if I could just give a quick example of that, Kyle, um, you had Daniel Packard on the podcast, which I encourage everybody, go back and listen to that episode. It aired January 26, 2024. And something that that Daniel said really stuck with me. He said, you need to learn to feel safe from within instead of treating and managing the symptoms. He's talking about anxiety. And again, if anyone like me, I'm a founder, struggles with anxiety, and Kyle, you were so transparent in that episode. Thank you for that. But if you struggle with that at all, go back and listen to that episode. The thing is, my point here is I had never heard of Daniel before I went on the show. He's not a A-list celebrity anxiety expert, right? But I feel that he actually, that interview was the single best thing I've ever heard on the topic of anxiety. And it's like, I would have never heard of him had he not been given a chance, right? So that's kind of the playing field we're trying to level because that great stuff, that those independent voices, sometimes are the ones that serve the best. What's disappointing is I'll get someone famous on and I'll ask them this question of what's been the biggest hurdle in your life. And I've had some actually say, well, I've never really had anything major to, to get over. My life's been pretty easy. And well, that's not very inspiring to the audience. But then I'll have someone like Amanda Blackwood. I don't know if you've seen that oh, episode, I, but I follow her on social media. Yeah. I, I oh. haven't seen the episode. But I follow her. She's incredible. Sorry. Continue. Oh, yeah. She is incredible. Her story is so heartbreaking. I mean, if you don't get touched by this story, you don't have a heart. The things that she went through, and there's someone out there that's been through something similar to what she has and then feels like there's hope. And that's what I'm looking for. Someone that has a story that can inspire, motivate, and let someone know that there is there is something out there. There's a there's a chance, there's hope that I can get through this. And what better way when you get someone like Amanda and you read and say, wow, this, this person would be interesting to get on the show. So I mean, real quick, you, you mentioned you've had some A-lister. Who's the fam most famous person you've had on? Oh, I, I don't know. Um, let me think here. Uh, I don't. I, I have to actually like look and see who I've had on. There's like a number of them. Um, I'll look, and while I'm looking, though, let me just say this: none of my best performing episodes have ever been with anyone who is a celebrity of any type. Think about that. So I always tell people on podcasting, like your biggest episode will never be the most famous person because, like you said, a lot of them they don't relate well to the rest of us, and that's not anything wrong to them. We like watching them from afar, but when it comes to like trying to learn from them, sometimes it's just crazy. I had one guy come on my show. I'm still looking for this, by the way, but I had one guy come on my show and he literally, uh, I asked him like, Hey, like how many times did you have to pivot to, to become more successful? How did like, what did you have to do? Like must've just been a crazy journey. He goes, I pretty much just started and hit everything exactly perfect. And, uh, yeah, that's it. He goes, never ran into any problems. I, I just overnight built a million dollar business and six months later was 10 million. And you know, I, I barely work. I don't really do anything. It just hit it right. And I'm like, wow, that's going to help no one, right? Like that does not sound like the human experience I've had. And again, that's why we look at them like so, like there's something super like amazing, right? Is because they really, they, they did something incredible and we like following the ex extraordinary, but it is very tough for that to actually like resonate uh, in, in a big way. So um, anyway, someone who I had on my show that I thought was really incredible, I liked was Michael Hyatt. Um, he's like in the productivity space. He has a, a journal that I've, it's called the full focus planner. I've been using it as a customer for years. So he was cool to have on, um, Dr. Caroline leaf came on and she talked a lot about anxiety. I think that your episode was better than that one, but like, uh, she, she's another big name and big name in my world. Uh, last one I'll mention is, uh, David Hanemeyer Hansen. He created Basecamp, Ruby on rails, uh, all kinds of things. Um, so a, a number of them, I guess. Seth Godin as well. He's a big name. I, I feel like I go through a bunch of these, but at the end of the day, I find my best episodes were on with individuals that no one had ever heard of. Um, those were the ones that had the impactful story. And like you were just talking about with Amanda, a lot of people that are listening probably haven't heard of Amanda, like haven't heard her, but she has such an inspiring story. And I always say when I podcast, I do it for one person. Do for one what you wish you could do for all. That's always the mindset. And because of that, I don't really have very many big names, uh, quote unquote, big names on my podcast anymore. I mostly find the person that just has the message I think will really serve one person well. One of the things that I've noticed, like with counselors and therapists and life coaches, the ones that have been through it all, 
they you can better relate with them because they've been through it. Yeah, and, and I know people have great intentions. You'll have someone who's not been through the same things, like whether it's addiction or some kind of abuse, what what have you. And they, you know, they go and they get their certificate to be a therapist or a life coach. And they're they're great people, but it's hard to relate to someone who hasn't been there. Yeah, yeah, it, it really is. It's important to speak from our own experiences, right? And, and again, that's why I appreciate your own level of transparency, Kyle, on, on on your own podcast. I think a lot of hosts, initially, especially maybe this was you, but my experience was I felt like I had to have a wall up and I was pretending to be someone I wasn't, but not because I want people to think differently of me. I just didn't want them to think less of me. But the reality is the more transparent each of us get in our lives, the more other people respect us. At least I found that to be true. The, like in my own personal life, I'll say things that other people just don't say. And I'm not like an oversharer. So I'm like, how are you? And be like, well, I was thinking about killing myself this morning. You know, like not, not to that level, of course, but I'll just be like, man, I'm really struggling right now. And everyone like in person through podcasts will say, wow, I really was inspired and like felt freed by you sharing that you're actually going through something versus just trying to put up a wall and hide it. And I, I think that's the beauty of humanity. And I do believe we're getting in more and more into a world where that type of thing is acceptable. Uh, and for a while, I feel like we all, I don't know, I, maybe, I don't, I don't know when it was, but I feel like for a while, even in my life, like I just didn't have that ability. Like I had to put up a little bit of a wall, um, which just seems to be maybe changing. And, and I don't know uh, that that's beyond my pay grade. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't like to make the show about me. I just feel that if I am open and let people know, I don't want sympathy. I'm here as kind of an example. You know, if I could get through this, you can get through this. And it's why I like to bring people on. I've had such a great support system. That's why I was over being, I was able to overcome. And there's someone that can come on the show that someone out there can relate to and get help from. And that's why I don't mind having life co coach after life coach after life coach come on because you may not click with the first one. Maybe not the second one. Maybe it's the third one. I don't, I don't know. It's so funny you mentioned that. Um, I, I don't know if you've had this happen. Do you have any siblings? Do you have brothers or sisters or anything like that? Uh, I had a little brother. Okay. So in, in anyone in our families or friends, our close circles, basically, let's put it that way for everyone listening, because I don't want to out anyone who doesn't have siblings or anything like that. But uh, um, you'll give them some advice and you know it's just solid advice and they just never take it. And then that one day, maybe you're there, maybe they just tell you about it. Somebody gives them the exact same advice and they're like, oh, you're right. I should do that. And you just are like, are you kidding me? You know, like I've been telling you that for years. Why, why didn't this connect? Right. I, I, at least I have been there a lot of times when I realize is it's just the way I'm saying it is not connecting. And there's nothing wrong with me. Just for some reason, it's just not really, again, connecting, clicking in their mind. When someone else says it just slightly different, it's like a light bulb goes off. I'm like, oh, I get that. Right. And for that reason, nobody is for everybody. And so I have no problem with bringing on even the same topics over and over again. If it's important, you repeat it, right? Knowing mm -hmm. that there's someone listening who's like, I don't really understand what Kyle's saying. And then Alex, I'm talking about myself in the third person, finally shares the same advice that Kyle's been giving, right? And you're like, oh, wait, now I understand that. Um, as the host or the friend that's sharing that, like we can't get upset. We can just say, you know what? I helped plant a seed at the very least, right? And because of that reason, I'm fine with having, the, again, it's important you repeat it, have the same topics on the same type of guests is important because it might finally click or at least reinforce uh, that this is the direction that we're all wanting to go in together. It's kind of like with kids. I could tell my kids something and then somebody totally different tells them the same thing and they finally get it. I think that's why my friends like me, by the way. I'm the fun uncle, but sometimes I, I inspire. And my, my friends that are dads are like, bro, I've, I've been trying to do that for years. Thank you. Right? So, <laughs> How do you even start something like this? You know, my, my former show was about entrepreneurship. Like when I just mentioned those, those quote unquote big name guests. Those are big names in the entrepreneurship business space. And that's where I come from. Mm -hmm. And uh, over 158 episodes that were part of that series of my, my podcasting journey, right? Um, I, I learned entrepreneurship in its simplest form. And I don't mean to oversimplify it, but I'm just going to share the, the four steps real quick. Step one, find an area of passion. For me, I became passionate about podcasting. I got into like, I, I was just super into it, right? I was a podcast myself, but that was my area of passion. 
Step two is to find the community and get into the community in that area of passion. So for me, I started going to all the conferences, speaking at the events, just meeting podcasters whenever I could. So I was passionate. I was in the community. And then I started doing the third step, which is to seek out a problem that that community is facing. What is the problem they have in front of them? And for me, I identified at one of, uh, one of the conferences. I, I got off stage after speaking. There's about 2,000 people there. And whether you're a good or bad speaker, people line up to talk to you because they're nice, right? So uh, everyone who would talk to me, I just had a pen and paper and was asking, what is it that you're struggling with? Again, this is my area of passion. It's the community. I wanted to find the problem they had. And I heard from all of them having trouble managing my guests, having trouble finding guests, don't know who my next guest should be like. It was all around this, right? And I just remember I got down to the end of my notepad on pages deep where it was like, okay, that was number 100, saying almost exactly the same thing, having trouble managing, having trouble figuring out how to like keep the process going, finding those guests, all those things. And so what I did, the fourth step is I created a solution. So I created a solution to that problem. And I'll never forget it. It was, it was years ago. It was in 2020. Got home from that conference and I'm, I'm a little slow sometimes, Kyle. So I, I was like whiteboarding it out, but just couldn't connect the dots. And um, I don't know how to describe it other than the fact that I really felt like God spoke to me. It was actually during a workout. So I was taking a break from it, had three whiteboards just lined up, just full of stuff. I'm like, what is, how do I fix this problem? Like, what is the solution? And I felt like while I was working out, like I, I really, for lack of a better term, I don't mean to over-spiritualize it. I felt like God gave me this like download of exactly what it was to be. And so I, I ran back inside because this was during COVID. So I was working on my back porch, ran back inside, pretty much erased everything on whiteboards and just wrote it all out. And I'm not saying it was perfect, but it was, a, it was an idea worth trying. It was an MVP, minimal viable product in the software space. And that's basically how it was born. And I'll never forget that day. Like it really stuck in my mind. Uh, that was March 10th, 2020. And um, man, it was just like a moment in my life where I was like, it felt divinely inspired. And what else I like about what you're doing is you get us involved. You send me messages sometimes and say, hey, I've got this idea. Can you fill out this form? Or what do you think about this? And you even send us videos that we can, or shows that we can go watch. There's so many things that you keep us involved. I don't think other sites that are similar to yours does that. Yeah. And I appreciate you noticing that. And I do think that there's, um, again, I, at the beginning, I call myself a quote unquote weird software founder. I, I definitely do things that are counterculture in my space. And matter of fact, it's been, it's been bad for me from the side of like, when I've looked for a software coach, the first thing they advise me to do is everything opposite of what I'm doing. Uh, cause every software founder, their dream is to not have to talk to people, right? It's to work behind the, this thing and have this wall between you and them, no communication with the outside world, just sit back, big idea, big picture. And I, I just flipped that on its head because I subscribe to the idea that doing things that don't scale, doing for one, what you wish you could do for all is a better modern. I, I want business to be human to human. I don't want it to be robotic. And so for me, I've automated a lot of the big picture stuff, which sounds weird, but, um, I prefer it that way because I want to talk to people. I want to be involved. I want to help. I want to be part of this community because again, area of passion, get into the community. I want to stay in the community because it's how I stay fresh on problems and being able to offer solutions. Not so I can like line my pockets more, right? It's so that I can actually be part of the thing that I claim to love. And I, I really, truly do. And so for me, I'm, I'm telling people this right now. If, if you're listening and you want to test this, if you email team at podmatch.com or message me on any of my social platforms, it will be me responding. I don't have a virtual assistant. Occasionally when I'm really busy, my wife, Alicia, will help, but she will say, hey, it's Alicia. Alex is a little backed up right now. Uh, let, me, let me help you get to him quicker, right? And we like it that way. And that's the way we will always run business. And sure, perhaps it hinders us from going to this scale mode and becoming a huge business that we can exit and stuff, but it's just not the dream. It's not, it's not what I want. I want to be in a community that I see making a difference in the world and I actually want to be part of it. So long-winded answer, Kyle, but thank you for saying that and acknowledging that because that to me, that's so, so, so important. Yeah, it's nice having someone that actually messages me back and it's not one of these AI bot things. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, sir. How's your day? Right. Like, and, and I'll be real, man. I told you like at the beginning, like things in my past, I came from the aerospace industry. I was a big corporate guy working behind a desk, emailing people all day, man. I, I used to write emails like a corporate drone and I still struggle sometimes, but I'm, I'm getting better and better. So, you know, this is actually Alex, right. Versus like super proper English, super giant words, polished periods after everything. Right. Uh, I'm a work in progress, man, but I, I, I want to make sure people know you're actually talking to me because I care about you. 
and you don't get that uh can you form that in a different question sir <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> yeah i just met somebody at this this podcasting conference called podfest that i was at uh in orlando florida last week and and they're like hey i'd love to connect with you can you text me i text them and at first i thought i was talking about it, it turns out i tested it, it was an ai thing because oh. i was like hey man can you send me a link to your website and he's like i'm sorry i don't understand the question I was like, can you send me a link to your website? We talked about it. He's like, I'm sorry. If you do a simple Google search, you'll be able to find the website. And I was like, is this a person? He goes, I, and it says, I don't understand the question. I was like, okay. So I just deleted the number. And I was like, I'm listen, if you don't have the decency to like actually talk to me, I don't want to talk to a computer. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're getting it to the end of the show. So what is your social media? Yeah, um, everywhere you find me, would be Alex Sanfilippo. Uh, best thing to do is actually go to podmatch.com. Uh, I'm not telling you to sign up because it's not for everybody, but any of those social links at the bottom or anywhere that you see me, that's how you'll get to me because my last name could be tough to spell. Um, so I'm, I'm on all platforms. I'm most active though on um, LinkedIn and Facebook and X or Twitter. I don't even know what to call it anymore. That other one, right? Um, <laughs> that's where I'm most active. But again, you can find all that at podmatch.com. It'll have links to everything. And then you can also explore my world a little bit. Well, I'm going to put those links in the description to make it easy for folks. Oh, thank to you. Find Appreciate you. that. <laughs> well, of course, man. Thank you for taking time to come on the show. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Yeah, Kyle, I, thank you again. If I could just like, give a final word, if that's okay. With sure, you. of course. Um, again, you're doing a phenomenal job here. I respect the type of podcaster you are. And this has already been, this has been one of my favorite episodes I've ever done. So thank you so much for it. And I've done literally hundreds of, I don't know how many hundred, probably 500 plus podcast episodes as a guest, but this has just been so good. And I just want to remind everybody we're on this whole topic. Like you've got a voice that can serve somebody who needs it. Get out there and serve that one person. Do for one what you wish you could do for all. And I believe that each of us has that capability, that capacity. You don't know who needs your message, but don't sell yourself short. Get out there, serve the world like Kyle's doing with this podcast. And uh, man, just honored to be here again. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Uh, if I can say, just go try it out. If you're into podcasting, whether you're a guest or you're a host, just try it out. Thank you again. And I also want to thank all you folks out there. If you are new to the channel, I hope you'll come back. Hit that subscribe button for my regulars. You guys are awesome because you make it possible for me to do this. Until the next one, everyone, please take care. Be kind to one another. God bless and peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network.